The competitive nature of the Batley and Spend by-election is a good thing. It's positive that Labour are having to compete for votes of Muslim voters rather than taking them for granted. And it's positive that there are demands on Starmer's party to take some positions instead of just going into a by-election, saying the Tories are bad and hoping for the best. However, there has also developed a darker side to the campaign in Batley and Spen. And sadly, in the constituency where Joe Cox was murdered, this has included political violence. The Guardian spoke to Dr. Abdul Raymond Rajpura, a GP who was canvassing with former MP Tracy Braybrin when another volunteer was attacked. The incident took place this Sunday. The Guardian reports Rajpura described being asked to look at a campaigner who had been knocked to the ground and kicked while on the floor. He was shaking and bleeding from the right side of his head, he said. Police were called. The former GP helped him find his glasses, which had been knocked to the floor, and headed back up the road with a young woman by his side. Then he says, an Asian man in a mask threw eggs, which hit his leg and smashed, dirtying his clothes. I thought, oh my lord, this could be a stone. Rajpura said he wished he could catch the assailant, but was unable to because of my age. That's clearly, I think, you know, the most worrying um, thing we've heard from the constituency. There have also been fake leaflets distributed um, when it comes to dirty tricks going on. This is a fake Labour leaflet showing Starmer taking the knee and pledging that the party will be fighting white privilege. It's a fake Labour leaflet. And it reads, the Labour Party are committed to representing the BAME community and supporting Black Lives Matter. The Labour Party believes that it is high time that white people acknowledged their privilege and gave something back to people of colour. Keir Starmer was proud to take the knee for Black Lives Matter. Will you join them? The back of the leaflet says, Labour believes that the biggest threat to our precious multicultural society is whiteness, and as a community, we must tackle that threat head on. Clearly trying to stoke up resentment, and of course, Labour would not put out a, a leaflet saying such ridiculous things to say during a campaign. Um, as far as I know, well, I do know, no one has claimed responsibility for the leaflets. Also important to note that no one has been arrested um, for the attacks, at least um, that's according to the, the latest reportage um, I've been looking at. That, of course, all means that we don't know which campaign, if any, is behind these um, well, the leaflet and, and, and the attacks. However, um, when discussing the general divisiveness of the campaign, Labour activists have been mentioning George Galloway. Now, again, it's worth repeating, with these two cases I've just described, I have no, absolutely no idea whatsoever who's, who's responsible. I don't have evidence to connect them to George Galloway or to anyone else. I do think there probably is something um, to the claim that Galloway is on one level fighting quite a dirty campaign. And to make that point, to explore that point, I want to return to a incident we talked about last Friday. This is a clip of the moment that Labour candidate Kim Leadbeater, who is gay, was subjected to homophobic um, harassment, I suppose, last Friday. Yeah. Yeah. This is where I live. This is my community. Like Don't come here and shout at me in the street. The Muslim community of Batley and Spen deserve, deserve better than this. They deserve better than this. I'm asking no, you, are you going away. to support Muslim parents? Do not walk away because you don't want to. Don't walk away because you don't want to. Don't walk away because you don't want to. Don't walk away because you don't want to. Are you supporting us, Kim? Kim, I'm here. Answer the question. Why are you running? Kim, I'm here to talk to you. Kim is walking away. Are you going to support Muslim parents who don't want their children to learn about I've been here 60 years of my life. So speak to this gentleman. We are going to chase Labour at every step. Now, as we said on Friday's show, the man harassing Kim Leadbeater is Shaquille Afzar. He's an anti-LGBT activist from Birmingham, and he was not part of George Galloway's entourage. It's worth repeating that because there were some people online suggesting that was the case. However, it does seem to be the case that he was at least tacitly supporting George Galloway. This is some more footage from that same day. Over from Birmingham today to pass this message. Vote anyone but Labour. Labour must not win in this constituency. If you got a credible candidate you feel you can vote for, vote for him. Do not vote for Labour. I am here to tell every single one of you. Do not vote. You heard, if you've got a credible candidate you feel you can vote for, vote for him. And he was very clearly pointing at George. Galloway. Now, I don't really like the politics of blaming politicians for what their supporters do without any further evidence. You know, you say, oh, D Jeremy Corbyn was 
terrible because Nick Griffin once said he was supporting Jeremy Corbyn or whatever. You know, this was always just troublemaking. It didn't mean that there was a genuine connection between the two people. However, in this instance, I don't think it is really reasonable um, for George Galloway or his supporters to claim it's a complete coincidence that homophobes are supporting his campaign. This is part of one of George Galloway's recent stump speeches in Batley and Spen. I am very concerned about what's taught in the schools. Some of you won't like this. I'm the father of five school-aged children. And I don't want my young children at primary school aged seven and nine taught about sex. I don't want them taught how to masturbate. Hey, hey. I don't want them taught about <laughs> anal sex. I don't want them taught that there's 99 genders. I don't want them taught that men can become women by the mere act of declaring themselves to be and end up in an Olympic team beating the actual girls and the actual women. I don't want them taught that parents chest feed when in fact it's women who breastfeed. Glory to women. Yeah. Women pulled up half the sky. This kind of woke, liberal identity politics is anathema to me. So I want parents' views on what their children are taught and when they are taught it to be taken properly into account. And in this area, that is not happening. Now, that was a lot of anti-LGBT dog whistles to include in a one and a half minute clip. So I think it's pretty clear that he is, for political reasons, trying to whip up fear about LGBT inclusive education. And I mean, in general, the politics of LGBT issues more generally. Owen, again, from your experience being in the constituency, from talking to George Galloway and from talking to, I suppose, supporters of the various campaigns, how dirty do you think George Galloway's campaign has been here? And I mean, do you think it's fair, I suppose, the not necessarily direct, but potentially indirect connection I've drawn between that harassment of Kim Leadbeater on grounds about LGBT education and then George Galloway talking about those issues himself? He's an arch social reactionary who voted for the Conservative Party earlier this year. He's someone who in 2014 denounced correctly Nigel Farage for whipping up prejudice against Johnny Foreigner and then campaigned alongside him. Uh, he said, you know, he'd campaigned for Remain like anyone with any brain cells and then obviously was an arch Brexiteer. Said some pretty grim things about uh, Donald Trump, which weren't exactly making clear his staunch opposition to the former president. And on these social issues, you can hear he sounds like Lawrence Fox. I've, I've personally interviewed, um, if I get his name right, yeah, interviewed uh, Shaquille Afsar uh, myself. And I do think there needs to be some demarcation there because this is a landlord property developer who's headed these anti-LGBTQ protests, which I made a documentary about two years ago in, in Birmingham. And he will opportunistically jump on on, on anything, essentially. Um, but And equally, Labour has their own questions to answer because if you take, for example, um, back in 2019, Roger Godsiff, the Labour MP, who backed, he was a Birmingham MP, he backed the anti-LGBT protests. The NEC rightly withdrew support from him. Um, the Chief Whip, Nick Brown at the time, backed the move, but some, including Tom Watson, uh, spoke against having the whip withdrawn from him. And there were sections of the Labour right who clearly don't have an ex who now run the party, don't exactly have an exemplary record. In fact, I should mention Shabana Mahmood, who is the national campaign coordinator of the Labour Party, who back in 2019, condemned at the time, 
spoke about how the religious background of peoples and the age appropriateness of conversations should be taken into account when teaching RSE in relation to LGBTU issues. Now, what George Galloway said, there's a pack of lies, incidentally. Education, uh, inclusive education, as being taught in these schools, doesn't teach young children about sex, nothing about sex whatsoever, let alone being taught how to masturbate. These are grotesque lies. Uh, what you do is you have these books, for example, which show people with uh, some children have mixed race parents, some have two mothers. I mean, that, that's literally the education that they're taught. And they're taught that's OK. That's fine. Families come in different shapes and sizes. These families exist. We should respect difference. That's all they're taught. That's correct. Obviously, people should support that. Um, in terms of, though, and I, I suppose the caveat I would add, I mean, that's why, as I said, George Galloway is an arch reactionary and no progressive should ever support him. There will be a narrative that Muslim disillusionment is not being driven by legitimate concerns, namely issues like Palestine and Kashmir, namely their sense of Islamophobia not being dealt with within the Labour Party, their sense of being marginalised by the Labour leadership and the Labour Party not taking them for granted, but rather by homophobia and anti-Semitism. And that's simply just not true, because anyone who's been to Batley and Spen will testify that when they speak to local Muslim voters, that actually those issues are not being raised at all spontaneously ever. Issues like those I've just mentioned are. In fact, some have told me that the only incidents they've heard of people, voters making homophobic comments about Kim Ledby to come from old white voters. Now, George Galloway, actually, in that speech, may well be aiming at those kind of, you know, Lawrence Fox types, I suppose, in Batley and Spen. But it would be a grave error to understand any problems, significant problems the Labour Party suffered um, being as a result of uh, being driven in any significant way by Muslim voters being homophobic and or anti-Semitic. That doesn't mean, as I've just done and you've done, George Galloway should not be explicitly condemned and explicitly opposed by people on the left. He's not our friend. He should be treated as an enemy. He's in league with profound reactionaries and we shouldn't throw minorities under a bus, even if you think the Labour leadership deserves a punch in the nose. But nonetheless, you know, that's the nuance, I suppose, that, yes, this Birmingham anti-LGBT protester opportunistically jumps on any bandwagon to further his agenda. Yes, there is react deeply reactionary elements of, of this charlatan, this demagogue, George Galloway. Um, but that's not the primary reason that Labour are suffering in any sense in Batley and Spen. Muslim voters voted for Labour for years when Labour was introducing pro-LGBTQ policies. So that's clearly not the overriding, pol the overriding concern whatsoever. It's the issues I've just raised. Mm. And they also voted for Labour when they had a Jewish leader. Well, I was just saying, I mean, Ed Miliband actually is the only Labour leader to call himself a Zionist. And Muslim voters still overwhelmingly voted for him. Mm, that is interesting. And I think it, it is super important because we're going to hear a load of a load of bullshit over the next couple of days, basically, if Labour loses, this, to make that distinction between voters and the candidate. Because George Galloway is an objectionable candidate in many, many ways, but many of the people voting for him are voting for him for very good reasons, actually, which is that on some issues, he is talking in a way, which means that it seems like he gives a shit about Muslim voters on issues such as Palestine and Kashmir. And if Keir Starmer had been strong on those issues, then, yeah, maybe George Galloway would have peeled a few homophobic voters off from any community, from all communities in the area. But he definitely wouldn't be mounting an effective challenge that he is right now if Keir Starmer hadn't seemed so weak, so wet when it came to these foreign policy issues. So it will be the case that ultimately if Labour loses, they only have themselves to blame. And anyone who, I think Owen's actually put this very well um, in a recent video on his YouTube channel, the, the, the people who are saying, oh, if Labour lose, it's because of reactionary voters, we don't want them anyway. One, that's electorally stupid, but two, it is cynical, opportunistic, and is intended, I mean, solely to get Keir Starmer off the hook, even if, the byproduct is to increase Islamophobia in Britain, which I think is a real danger if some of these Starmerites can't, I suppose, get some perspective here.